Afternoon everybody, Rich here, back for another video for the Diecast F1 review. Here today is the Williams FW18 for the 1996 Formula 1 World Championship. And in the car is World Champion Damon Hill. And this is one of my favourite cars, I'm pretty sure it's many people's favourite cars as well. And it really showed what Williams were made of, how Williams could dominate Formula 1. 12 wins, the most dominant Williams I think ever made. Uh, 8 wins for Damon Hill and 4 for Jacques Villeneuve. I'm pretty sure there could have been more wins as well. Um, but for mistakes and uh, not so much reliability issues, although there were a few issues. Um, but the most dominant car. Uh, three wins on the trot for Damon Hill. Uh, Australia, Brazil and Argentina. Um, and then Jacques Villeneuve got the on the bandwagon. And also Michael Schumacher started winning a few as well. Only uh, four winners throughout the season actually. Uh, of course eight for Damon Hill, four for Villeneuve, three for Schumacher and one lucky win for Olivier Panis. Um, but they're unimportant. And I will review that Ferrari as well, Schumacher's Ferrari from 96 as well, uh, at a later date. But uh, focus on the FW18. Like I said, it's really, uh, the car that really showed what Williams were made of. And uh, it really is a shame that they let Damon Hill go at the end of the season as well. But uh, enough about that. I think I reviewed that in the uh, FW19 review, or mentioned it anyway. But yeah, 8 wins for Damon Hill, 12, 4 for Villeneuve. I keep saying that. Just have to keep saying how many wins there were, but uh, it really was a beautiful looking car as shown here in the model uh, in its box. I will take it out the box in a bit, but uh, I've already done a quick rundown of the wins. But uh, really is uh, the last of the uh, proper Williams cars. The FW19 uh, was an evolution, but uh, the drivers both made it difficult for themselves throughout '97. The '96 car was sort of effortless, really. They just once again the drivers sort of made it difficult for themselves. Because Damon Hill sort of running off the road in uh, Barcelona uh, at the Nürburgring and also colliding with a tyre wall at the Italian Grand Prix really didn't do anything. There were three wins basically he could have, could have added to his uh, score as well. But uh, also a, a heartbreaking uh, uh, retirement at the Monaco Grand Prix where he's leading by absolutely miles. His engine blew up coming out the tunnel and that pretty much sealed the race for him there. Or sealed the uh, end of the race rather. Of course, four wins for Villeneuve throughout the season. Uh, his first win at the European Grand Prix, where he narrowly won uh, with Schumacher all over his rear end. Um, also winning at the British Grand Prix. Um, where else did he win? Estoril and Hungary. Um, but uh, I think that Hungary was a lucky win there. I think uh, Damon Hill was right behind him at the time as well. Um, and also the winning, winning at the British Grand Prix after Damon Hill spun off. But I think Villeneuve had that one sealed as well. Um, but of course uh, Damon Hill came out on top at the end now we'll get on to the model it's in its uh, box of course uh, the mini chance box the early bo uh, early star boxes anyway so there's no well, apart from the side having mini champs 18 on the side you've got the pause model arts and it's in the grey box as well whereas most uh, the mini chance boxes of today are black so that's the box reviewed I don't normally review the boxes but uh, that's that anyway I should do a jump cut while I take the car out of the box and I shall return once I've done that. So back in a moment. Okay, back again. Now here's the car in its unboxed form. And I uh, didn't mention at the beginning or mention a minute ago that it was the Mini Chance version. There are other versions available as well. There's the Onyx version, which is um, still a pretty good model but doesn't have the quality over this one. It's more flaky decals and uh, creaky plastic. So uh, that's a bit of a letdown on that one. And then later on, uh, Quartz I got hold of that uh, Onyx mold and rebranded uh, rebranded it as their own and uh, released that as a FW18 as well but this is the mini chance version the most important one and it's an absolute stunner I just feel a bit uh, iffy in the front suspension though but uh, not an issue there uh, of course in its uh, brilliant beautiful Rothmans livery although no Rothmans written on the car just uh, barcodes uh, all over the place and then also the D Hill logo on the top of the chassis there, you can't see it because of the bloody light. <sighs> but uh, one of my absolute favourite cars, I did say that FW19 was my favourite, it does look slightly better in my opinion because of the uh, extra decals and the uh, sculpted engine uh, area on the top, but uh, this car does come in the top three of my favourites as well. Um, and also the blue is quite dark, you can't see it on the camera, the, the colour scheme is quite a dark blue. The, the light from behind me is actually shining it and make it a bit brighter. Uh, and also notice the suspension's a bit loose as well. I think that wheel might fall off, especially if I keep playing with it. Um, yeah, well, I'll leave that alone. Um, but yeah, an absolute stunning model. 
Uh, not sure how many were made. It's not a particularly rare model. Well, I say particularly rare. The Villeneuve version is pretty common. You can pick down one up for about twenty, twenty-five pounds if you're lucky, um, or on a good day. They tend to sell pretty cheaply. The Damon Hill version tends to go for a bit more, but some of them come with a plinth, a World Championship commem commemoration plinth, which the the car sits on. So it tends to come with that one. I come with a plinth, and it tends to sell for a bit more. But uh, do a quick view round of the car. I've already given you the lowdown on what the car achieved. And uh, she'll give it a quick look around the car as well. So it's a nicely painted model. This angle really shows off the colour scheme quite nicely. You've got the uh, the golden red stripes down the side there, and also underneath the bodywork there, or down the sides. The rear wing also there. And it's uh, like I said, one of my favourites. We just do a spin round there, get an idea of the rear work, rear bodywork. Very nicely done it is as well. I've noticed something as well, there's no T-cam on the top of this car as well, something I didn't really take much notice of. But uh, no T-cam on the top, so do a quick view around there. View around the sides. It, it does feel a bit fragile, because like I said, the front suspension does feel a bit fragile, if I should say. And uh, it does feel like it's going to break off, <laughs> so I'm not going to keep playing with that, I can't help it. But yeah, absolute stunner of a car. And it really showed how, well, whether how good Damon Hill was or how bad or how good Villeneuve was as well because Villeneuve comes straight from Indy cars and jumps straight into this car and uh, first time of asking slapped the car in pole position <laughs> and uh, basically pissed all over Damon Hill the whole weekend and uh, was only told to slow down because of an engine oil leak and uh, Damon Hill took the victory um, I mean nice if there was a version of this car with all the oil splattered all over it basically uh, painted brown rather than white and blue but uh, if you look at the uh, the images of that car or the videos of that of that race, uh, you'll see that the car was actually covered in oil. It's brown all over. But uh, it'd be nice if um, Lee Chats recreated that. It looked, it looked quite good, I think. But uh, we keep turning around here, and there are a few versions on the online as well. I do see a few on eBay with the uh, the barcode removed and replaced with the proper Rothmans uh, livery as well, proper Rothmans sponsorship. And it does hike the price up quite a bit as well. Whether that's justified, I don't know, because I don't often see them sell. Uh, but anyway, that's that. Another issue with the decals on the nose is that the uh, this yellow sticker here should have, uh, I think it's Black Tower uh, written in there. But of course, it being alcohol sponsorship, they uh, left it blank. Which is a shame, because it does make it look a bit gawky and weird. But uh, like I said, there are decal sheets available where you can just slap them on and... Uh, uh, tart the car up a bit more, although you do have to remove the barcodes first and also if we zoom in on the chassis you can see the, the D hill on the top there so removing that one might be a bit more of an issue because uh, you put anything uh, corrosive on the uh, bodywork there then it's going to take the white paint off um, <coughs> excuse me. so that may be an issue updating the car there but uh, if we keep looking around here, that's a little stunner of a car, we just zoom in on the uh, rear bodywork here, You've got the uh, Number five winglet on the rear wing there. Got the Renault the barcode, also the Hill Renault just there. Oh, zoomed in too far. There we go. So Damon Hill on the cockpit there. His uh, arm looks a bit fat there. I think that's an early driver model issue. So we just zoom around here and look in the cockpit. You can see the steering wheel, pretty basic, but it's got dials and numbers and a, a fuzzy, uh, blurry complexion. There we go. A bit, of, a bit of dust in there. I think the previous owner probably had this in his uh, cabinet because there's a second hand model, of course. So there's the detail in the uh, cockpit, and the steering wheel just turn, although only a little bit. And it does feel a bit loose. Uh, so that's that. There's detailing on there, quite nicely done as well. And if we just turn the car around again, another issue with this car, I think it's the same with all the uh, Rothmans Williams models of Mini Champ, they don't paint the driver properly. The top half of the driver's uh, overalls is white, but many champs seem to have uh, ignored that and just left them all blue. I pointed this out, I think, in the um, FW16 review, the Senna model. The Senna figure was all blue, rather than the uh, top half being white. And it really does sort of detract from the uh, proper look of the car. Um, but overall, it's not, not too bad. As I say, if you, some people prefer the car without the driver in, so you can, if you want to, try uh, and get the driver out of the car, he probably wrecked the model doing so, but uh, it's up to the individual. 
uh, quality wise, build quality, there are a few issues. I pointed out the suspension it is very loose on this version, or at least my model anyway. I'm sure there are versions where it's absolutely stiff and no issue at all. The barge boards are uh, quite well held on. I think I just, I didn't, no, it's not, it's right. It's just popped out of place. It, it, they, put, they pop in, so that's, that's no issue there. I thought I'd broken it, but the, the barge boards do feel a bit flimsy. Uh, the front wing, quite solid, because it's quite a, well, it's, it's all one piece rather than the modern cars where it's all pieces stuck all over it so that the front wing is quite solid on there wing mirrors are quite solid as well they're not going to pop off um, unless you force them the rear wing seems to be the most bit of concern because the rear wing is not overly well, well it's, it's attached quite well but it's just so thin that it's just going to fall off it what feels like it's going to fall off because it's same with the uh, side bits as well they're very flimsy and so you're not going to want to be playing with this one on the carpet or playing with it on the carpet the rear wing does feel like it's going to disintegrate as soon as you sneeze on it. Um, anyway, we'll have a quick look underneath. Go under the under side here. We've got the uh, screw holes there. We've got the Paul's Model Art uh, logo up there. No Mini Chance written on the bottom here, although it is a Mini Chance model. Williams FW18, 1996 underneath there. And also got the 118 scale uh, badge there. So no Made in China, which is surprising. And... We also got the uh, the diffuser, quite nicely sculpted there. Uh, they'll probably need more detail. I don't know. These are, these earlier models. I don't know how much uh, detail they put on the underside of the car, but uh, some of it's all right. We've also got the keel on the underside of the chassis there. The blue really does show up quite nice at this angle. We got the light on the on the uh, color scheme. It shows up really nicely. We've also got the uh, the Oz Racing wheels there. Goodyear Eagle tires, and uh, yeah, it really does show up quite nicely. So yeah, just turn the camera down. There we go. And zoom out a bit. Nope, can't zoom out, so I have to move the car. There we go. Move the camera again. There we go. Right. So that's pretty much my review of this model. Um, like I said, it's probably a favourite of many people as well, at least here in the UK. I was pretty sure everyone who uh, followed Formula 1 at the time wanted this car on their uh, mantelpiece. And uh, it is an absolute stunner. And uh, they're not overly rare. I think I did mention they're not hugely rare. If you want the Villeneuve version, then you can pick them up easy peasy uh, for the Mini Chance version. Anyway, there are Onyx versions as well and the Quartzo versions. I would recommend getting the Quartzo version over the Onyx version um, because I had the Onyx version before I had this and it was it was, it was all right build quality, but the decals just peeled off like, you know, like uh, tissue paper, basically. They're very, very flaky. Um, most notably where this Renault badge is on the side here, the, the decal, the whole blue decal just flaked off and it it, it, you know, it, it was a shame, it did look ridiculous at the end because it just flaked off for no reason. Um, and also I think the decals on the uh, front bodywork also peeled off as well, so you're going to have issues uh, maintaining that one. So I would say get the get the Quartzo version, which is basically the Onyx version but rebranded, sort of redecorated and uh, given a better finish. So uh, if you can pick up one of those, then by all means. But I would recommend getting the uh, Mini Chance version, of which this is. And uh, price-wise, uh, so the Villeneuve version you can probably pick up for twenty twenty-five pounds, um, and the Damon Hill version a bit more because, like I said, it comes some some of them come with a uh, um, a, a plinth uh, commemorating the World Championship. Uh, not saying they all do, but a lot of them do. Um, so yeah, and there also is a show car version of this car as well for the 97 season. It's basically this car uh, decked out in the 97 colour scheme uh, or logos and things. Um, so I'll, I'll avoid that one unless you want that one as well. So I tend to avoid the show cars if I can. Um, unless people buy them for me then I will accept them. Um, but I will get on the subject of show cars later on. Um, so if you want... I've said this before, if you want, to, want me uh, to review a model of your choice, just let me know. Uh, sort of a request thing. Um, you know, of a model and you want me to review it, I shall try and find it. If I have it, I shall review it. And uh, I shall do that. But anyway, I think that's my review for this car, the FW18. An absolute beauty of a car. And uh, I'd highly recommend it. But anyway, this is me signing off, logging off, and disappearing. And I shall return with another review. So uh, bye for now.